Um, I think most of you are sitting down, so I'll sit down too. I want to tighten it. Remember to go the other way from time to time to keep your body movements mindful and and fresh by sometimes using the other hand to brush your feet, things like that. It's good for your brain. It's um, in the gesture of new beginnings, the woven fingers take a moment to pause and be still. Your eyes may close part of the way or all the way, whatever's most quieting. We are turning our awareness internally and just begin with curiosity and observe the sensations of your body. Training your mind to go to those body feelings in breath. Grounding, notice where you touch the earth. Breathing out one more time. Run your hands back over your skull a few times just to kind of wash away, wake up energy. And then bring your hands together at your heart. Whatever that is easy and comfortable for you. Sitting up gently tall. Awareness to the central channel in the body, the main river of energy, the spinal cord, like you're breathing up and down that place. Pranamasana, increasing the vital energy with this pose, the hands press, come away from the body, elbows come up to some degree. So Go up until you feel some good sensation. Press your hands, breathe deeply. Activation, up into the shoulders, back, chest. And five, bring them back in, relax the arms. When that active pose, bring your chin down towards your chest. You start with this moment, this day as far as intention goes. And the larger ones may present themselves. Inhale, sit up tall. Oh. Heart lifting pose, starting with back bending. Fingers forward as your hands come back. Lean back into your hands, bending your elbows, lift your chest. Bring your feet out to the earth one at a time. Press your hands and feet, gaze down your nose. So we have breath awareness, we have the steadying of our focus, our eyes. Two resources, grounding is another one that where you touch the earth, noticing one more time, heart lift pose, and release, pressing off your hands, straighten your legs out, and you work my way back onto the mat, um, infinity pose to the right, with the left leg crossing over the right leg, hook feet together, and then we come out like we're going to lift into upward dog, that strong, straight arm. So just where your hands are for your own body proportion and roll to your side. Stay on your hip. You stay on the ground. Just roll to the side. Lift out of your shoulders. Say hello to your side body. And exhale to center on the other side. So proxying your right leg over your left, hook your feet together. So this is one action here. The other is this rolling to the side, exploring that lengthening of your left waist and then bringing your arms and hands out to a supportive position, gazing back. 
So this is a lot to bring together. That's one of the ways yoga asana practice can help us study our minds because we have this big project in each pose. Just do your best with it, don't make it a big deal. And exhale, it's complete. Hold your legs back in. Sit up tall and with a relaxed belly, come around to the left side into rotation. Letting your opposite hand go across the leg or knee and feel that connection up into your back through your hand. One more time, make sure you've found your range of motion gently here. Turn just your head and neck to look the other way. Twisting two directions at a time. As much a great exercise as a body one. With an exhale comes, relax and bring everything back to center. Switch the cross of your legs if possible. Belly twisting the other way. So let your belly be relaxed for the turning to look back, hand behind for support. Add the reaching across hand as a lever. Just the right amount. Working deeply, but without causing any harm. One more time and then we'll turn the head. Exhale completely. Keep your lower body as it is. Just turn your neck and your head the other way, other shoulder, three, three times. The eyes get a little side stretching here. Yoga gives us exercise for the eyes. One more time, breathe it out. Head releasing first, and then the rest of the body. Pause and feel. Malasana. Bring your feet to the floor. Bring them in close, whatever that is for you. Seated squat. Hold your shins. Bring your heart forward. Stay or reach your arms through. Awakening the energy across your seat and low back. Nice in the morning. One more time, breathe deeply. Release and make your way to your hands and knees. So we consolidate tucking in the feet. I'm going to use my hands to tuck them in. Spread your hands and pop to your knees. Work your way there in your own way is fine. Tabletop, we say, on our, on our legs, table legs, hands and knees on the ground, feet on the ground. Focus, let's do the whole spine and then we'll focus on the shoulder blades. So drop your tail way down, let your low back round, your mid back reach for the sky, your chin towards your chest. Inhale, bring your face forward and your heart, let your tail lift a small amount. Twice more, your head and tail both going down, mid back towards the sky, press. Inhale, extend. Exhale, flex, press. And one more time, extend. And neutral, scapula push-ups, helping strengthen the scapula onto the back. So focus on your shoulder blades where you close your eyes and feel. Squeeze your shoulder blades in towards the middle of your body, towards your spine. Squeeze in. So it's a little bit like the cow, the chest forward. And then to broaden them out towards the shoulders, it's like the cat spine, but just with your upper back. That roundness, shoulder blades out. Try that two more times. Slowly squeeze your shoulder blades together. Heart drops a little bit. Squeeze. And then broaden, press. One more. Squeeze shoulder blades. Can't see them. Gotta really sense that. And then press and broaden them out. Feels like they're going out towards your shoulders. 
and relax. Let's come back to child's pose, sit back towards your heels, palms up, head down. Let your thumbs reach out towards the floor, maybe even touch if they will. One more breath. Mm -hmm. Flip your hands back over, pull up to cow spine. Tuck your toes, go back to extended puppy, elbows up, head down, stretch your feet. Spine long. Breathe out one more time. Inhale, up to table, heart forward, release the feet. Cow spine, exhale, downward facing dog, lift your knees. Step your feet in, reset your hands, spinning them outward, and then bring your head down. Reach your tail up towards the sky and your weight back into your legs, pushing the hands. Shoulders are broad, external, so they're rolling out towards the pinky sides of your hands, but the thumbs are strongly grounded. One more breath. Find the uplift in your low belly, that tone in the navel zone. And then use that to come forward with your hips high, step forward, breathe in, lengthen. Breathe out, lengthen into forward fold. Tuck your chin at the end and then stand up, leave with the top of your head, press your feet, rise slowly with your in breath. Hands touch at the very top of the finish of your breath and then exhale, bring your arms down. Settle your shoulders right on the center of your ribs and let them rest there. All right, soles of the feet. Bring your right arm across your body with your palm facing back. <clears throat> your other elbow comes up and bends and hooks under to catch that right arm, and then you come into a bit of a twist to stretch your shoulder, so it may feel good to step your feet and turn them out a little bit, so a little wide. A little twist in the spine, shoulder stretch. Gather your fingers. Mindful of knees. Knees are not meant to twist. Breathe out one more time and come back to center. Keep your arms, you can come to shoulder hug or eagle with the fingers towards the sky. And just have a moment for that. Focus on just the upper body aspect of eagle pose. You can move your head and neck around a bit. Experiment with lifting and lowering elbows. Three more breaths with mindfulness. Exhale, lower your elbows and release your arms. Think of wings, big, strong eagle wings as you lift up and down. Other side, left arm just comes right across your chest, palm back. Bring the right elbow. It's nice if you get above the elbow. And then twist, gather fingers, attention in the knees. The default gazing is nose gaze, so just following where your face is turned. Non-attached, soft, but steady. One more breath. Final twist, plus the shoulders. A little slowness, come to center and shoulder hug or eagle second side exploration. Resettle your feet if you like and explore this upper body, neck, shoulders, the upper back connected to this. Breathe deeply.
exhale. And as you're ready, lower your elbows, release your arms out, and then that think of strength and openness underneath the arms as you come up with the in-breath. Lift your ribs and then out breath. Settle the shoulders. Home. And step your feet underneath your hips, looking down, loving awareness. Inhale, reach to the sky. Waiting for your breath, slowly reach up. Lift your whole rib cage, not just the front. Exhale to forward fold. If you need extra breaths, please take them. Gradually learning to stretch your breaths out really long. So you have plenty of time to move into the shape. Halfway lift, not a big distance travel here. Move with the breath, inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, spread your hands, step your legs back. Kavakasana, five. Four, you read active pressing. Knees may be down if you're building strength in this. You should feel some activity in your chest and your shoulders. Also, thighs firm, also wide belt around the waist. Breathe out one more time. Knees down, untuck your toes right where the knees are. Explore upward facing dog. Bring your belly forward, gaze down. Stretch your front body and then slowly exhale through the table to downward dog for five breaths. So you may use these variations as we continue. What works best for you today? Breathe deeply one more time. This pose, creating broad chest, broad upper back. Come forward with inhale to halfway lift pose. Exhale, draw your low belly in and fold forward. Tuck your chin. Inhale, stand up, strong legs. Exhale, keep giving this imprint of mountain pose when we return to it, settling the shoulders. Where do you tend to hold them? Know yourself. Train your body, mindful. Okay. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. We'll do two more rounds, similar to that one. Halfway lift, inhale, forward energy. Spread your hands, legs back. Maybe add the knees down, elbows in, chaturanga. Press your arms straight, breathe in, use your feet to guide yourself into this shape. And again, the feet here flip over one at a time as you step in to down dog, breathe five. Reset your hands if you need to. Just to look at them, then bring your head down. Reach your heels towards the floor. It's okay if your knees bend. One more time, try to lengthen the sides of your torso. Come forward, inhale. Step or jump. Lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, stand up. Whole body, sun gratitude practice. Exhale, stand tall, set your shoulders. One more time, Surya Namaskara A. Sun gratitude, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, extend. Exhale, go back. Elbows down or not, hug in. Inhale, press the arms straight, upward dog. Try to find some joy in your body as you move through. Downward dog, find steadiness. So one of the teachings of yoga is to apply the proper amount of heat. Have a little determination. Be strong in your practice. And then we balance that with some softness. Tapas means this heat we apply 
the effort we put in. One more deep breath. Inhale, coming forward. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, standing up. The poses might get more easy and open as we move through them repeatedly. Exhale, bring down your arms. Elephant pose, feet hip distance apart. Settle for a moment. And then hips back and knees back as you sit into that chair pose and bring your elbows and hands together, thumbs at your eyebrow center. So this brings us into an extended spine in a squat. It is not forever. Focus on your open feet. Touching this calming point, observe that sense at the brain between the eyebrows and then inhale comes, press your feet to release. Forward fold, catch your pelvis and tilt it forward with your hands you can use that to help guide you in. It's okay if your knees bend. So we, the fingers can encourage that drawing up in the front pelvis. And then come down and slide your fingers under your toes to the roots of the fingers or to your wrists. We're not harming here. It's okay if you catch your elbows instead, but this is lovely for connecting the whole body. So it's like you're going to pull your hands out, but the feet are gently holding them there. So we have the elbows going a little wide. Head down. Hara Hastasana, foot hand pose. Observing how the whole body is connected. One more time. Soles of the feet to the forehead, lengthening the back body, breathe out. Carefully release your hands. Back to your pelvis, press your feet and stand up. Exhale. Stepping with the left leg back to warrior A. Big step, angle the heel, and then turn your ribcage forward, bend your knee out over your ankle. Find that stance. Up arms, elbows bend. You can rest your head into your forearms, gaze down your nose, bring it all together. So apply the tapas more deeply. Apply a little softness where you can find it, your shoulders, your face, spreading feet. Breathing out one more time. Let your legs straighten as you release your arms. Turn to the side, warrior B. Turn out your back toes. Get some more space between your feet and come out into the lunge to the side with the shoulders turned down. Turn your head forward. And on this one, let's turn the palms up. Sense equal reaching. One more time. Release your hands back the other way. And release back to the top section of your mat. Heel toe, heel toe, works the ankles and feet. And release. Second side, right leg back, knee bends, rib cage forward. Leave your fingers thumbs wide, unshakable courage gesture here. Anchor the chest to really hold that front rib cage in and down as you hold your warrior A. Pelvis is moving forward on the right side. Feel your breath one more time. The 
release your arms and straighten your front knee. Turn to the side with your back foot. Create some more space between your feet. Bend out your knee and stretch your arms. Turn your head for your B. Viramadrasana. Open hearted. Broad back and chest. One more time, breathing deeply. And release two wide parallel feet from here. Looking down every time. Ground the roots of your big toes, lifting your toes, spread them. Roots of the big toes pressing and then bring your toes down. Reach your arms out, breathe in. Breathe out, thumbs down to leave your fingers behind your back. Hands reach down towards the ground, squeeze the shoulder blades, bring your chin towards your chest. Customize each offering for your body in the moment. One more time, applying that just right amount of heat. And release, relax. Move your fingers the other way. Again, squeeze shoulder blades, draw the hands down, right ear towards the shoulder. Customize. You can bring your hands over to the other side a bit. Releasing tension, head, neck, and shoulders. With some ease, go the other way, other ear towards the shoulder, maybe the hands move towards the other seat. The feet stay spreading, we're aware of that earth connection. Standing pose is super grounding. Back up to center, one more breath in, and the forward fold, explore. So you can come part way or keep heading your head down to the ground. Shoulder blades squeeze together, and then the shoulders soften so your arms can come away from your back possibly. Be where you are with this with zero force, no harm. A little bit of forward roll in the shoulders can be useful here to balance this pose. One more breath. Inhale, energy, rise. Apply that heat to come up and then exhale, release. Triangle pose to the front of the mat. Turn your leg from the hip all the way to the foot. Reach up and down, come over. So we have this lovely expansive shape reaching in all these directions, long torso, eyes skyward. One more time, extend the triangle. Feel the exhale and it goes down into your belly and moves that sense of down in the belly to help you come up and change side breathing freely as you turn to the back of the mat, settling the stance, and then the arms reach with inhale and you come over, lengthening that torso out as you find a spot to rest your lower hand that is not on your knee joint. <laughs> and then spin your ribs to look up. So you reach big and then where can softness be applied? So that we don't overdo and we stay as peaceful as we can, even when we're working deeply. Inhale, coming up, back to the front side, adding the knee bend and coming to lean and reach and extended side angle pose. A moment for that exploration and we'll hold steady so we can come to the floor. If you'd like inside or outside the foot, reach out and then draw your shoulder back into your body. Eyes to the reaching hand. 
This pose is your meditation. One more breath. Feels complete, exhaling. Inhale, reverse out. Exhale on the second side. If you need more time to set it up, take a few extra breaths for that. If you know it, you can spend more time finding the balance of Sarah and Sukha, steadiness and sweetness. Deeply breathe again. Through the exhale, inhale, come up, process, and work your way back to the top section of your mat. Parsotanasana, starting with the left leg back, turn towards the front, straight leg stance. So space both ways to feel balanced and steady. Thumbs down, but don't reach back. Explore this with me. Just turn your thumbs towards the back and then bend your elbows and slip them up behind you. So there are some choices here. Um, knuckles, fingertips, you can hold on, but it's not quite the same. Gradually bring your hands further up your body. So keep developing that practice. Okay, so wherever that is in the moment, breathe in, lock spine. Breathe out, lengthen out, like we're coming into triangle, but a forward facing one. So we're lengthening out and down. Elbows lift towards the sky, head down. Open feet, press the earth. One more time. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, same stance, revolve triangle, reach up with your left arm, that whole side lengthens. Exhale, it slices across, maybe to the outside or on the foot or like other arm opens into a twist. One more time. Exhale, bring down your arm out of the twist, and then inhale, stand up. Set your shoulders and change sides. Step forward, step back, and it's just why we take a little time with the foundation of the stance because it's a, a lot. It's challenging. Mm, it looks simple. Okay, thumbs down and back. Bring your hands together again. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, exploration of forward fold with the lead of the heart and the elbows gently up. Long neck, feet spread. Exhale once again. Inhale, rise. Exhale, release your arms, set the shoulders. Right side lengthening, inhale. Forward fold, hand coming to that opposite leg or the floor. And then the left arm opens into a twist. Express your body where it is in the moment. One more time, breathe. Your own exhale, release the twist. Your own inhale, stand up. Set your shoulders in the top of your ribs and then step up. Concentration for dancer pose, stepping to a wall if you would like. Shifting weight into your left leg. Listing over until you can get your right foot to come off the floor, just a small amount. And then bend your knee, right knee, 
and reach back with your right hand to catch your ankle on the outside or your foot, whatever's most comfortable. Bend your elbow to bring that heel in towards your hip and you can use your other hand where it's supported or you can bring it back there too. Standing on one leg is this amazing concentration exercise. Do not be disturbed, but keep trying the whole time. If you reset, you get to teach yourself how to come in and out again. Placing a negative thought with a positive one is one of the teachings of the Yoga Sutras. Lean forward, reset here if you need to, but come to the second part, lifting the back knee, reach the opposite arm out, standing half bow. Just do your best. Press your foot into your hand. Feel some opening at your front shoulder one more time. And slowly come out. If possible, land and pause at your shoulders. Find your mountain. Nice flow of energy when you stand well. And then we shift to the other side of the list. Spread that foot. Start the shift. So we try to stay even, even though we're doing this huge asymmetrical movement here. To come off one leg. Bend your knee, catch your ankle or foot. Or trousers, whatever you can catch is fine. Maybe both hands. Heel towards the hip, first part, preparation. Be present. Exhale for five. In the second part, the coming into the dancer pose, lifting the back knee, bring the opposite arm forward. Find a steady place for your gaze. Press your foot into your hand. Breathe deeply. I'm working on straightening my standing leg. Have something that you're focusing on. What are you working on? Focus. One more time. There's always something we can be refining. And then come on out and let it be as we finish dating practice. Have another moment with that sense of resting shoulders on the ribcage. And then reach up towards the sky. Breathing in, breathing out, slowly forward fold. Bring your right leg back and your knee down to the ground. Anjani Asana. Low lunge with the knee heading forward. Let's do the hands to the sacrum. So palms like you're going to your back pockets of your jeans, guiding your pelvis forward with your hands. Grounding both feet. Steady gaze down the nose. One more time, breathe deeply. There's a lot of weight in that front foot. Press strongly into it to release and keep straightening it. Let your hips come back and your hands slide down that front leg as you bring your toes back. Reaching across to the outside of the leg or floor so we have a side movement and the forward fold together. So bow with a little side movement. Two, three, four, and five. Release the side movement first, and let's come into Eka Padaraja, the pigeon pose with the front leg. So close in the knee and bring it to the front of your mat. Slide your other leg straight back. If you need to come to your back to do figure four, it's always okay. You can also, we can work lots of ways here. You can be off this hip with your pelvis forward. You can be over on the hip. Really take care of your body. Coming out and down. 
to your own degree. Keeping the front knee folded in on itself is the most protective of the knee joint. So if you open up your knee joint, just be more thoughtful about that area. Each pose the object of your meditation. Breathe deeply one more time. Spread your hands, make your way back to downward dog with that leg going up into the air. So let's take it up and out. Little movement as it feels good. Free exploration there, releasing that hip and then Bring it down, breathe out, downward facing dog. Second side, Anjaniyasana, low crescent lunge. Bring your right leg forward, back knee down. Settle your shoulders. Knee comes out towards the toes. Sacrum hold that center of your pelvis with your hands, guiding that forward gently, opening your, your heart. But not too much, don't force that. Balancing, right? Really got a lot of weight in that front foot. Breathe out one more time. And then determine pressing into it to come out and back. Release your hands. Come into the forward shape. Add a little bit of a side reach. Just the outside of the leg or foot or the floor. Whenever we come into forward shapes, there's this calming response. Yoga increases the resilience of our emotions and our nervous system to move between things, energies without being disturbed. Release slowly. Know yourself. This hip. Hold the knee. Use your hands. Bring the knee forward. Slide the other leg back. Explore and settle in. So stretching the outer hip. Mindfulness of the knee and the low back. It's okay to sit to the side. Things like Trying to stay squared over my pelvis and come forward and down today. Or can be softened. We can't just let go of everything here because we might hurt ourselves. So we have to be present and engaged and then let go of the unnecessary effort. Just the right amount. That's the meditation. One more breath. One hand at a time to the earth. Tuck under the back toes. Lift up, press, and come into the three-leg dog, expressing yourself freely here with movement. Bring both feet down. Breathe out one more time. That Last bow, downward dog, shake your head, no tension. Come through and sit down. Come into Vada Kanasana with the feet together and the knees apart. It's okay to sit up on folded we'll blanket if you like. Give yourself a moment to settle and bring, settle and bring your feet in to your own degree. And then let your knees rest towards the floor to your own degree. Let this develop over time. Hands leave and come around the toes, sit up tall. Settle your shoulders into that centered position and tuck your chin. Feel the chest rise up to the chin. 
as you breathe and fall away. Exhale, and then inhale, lift your chin for the second variation, the lengthening forward, so sense of leading with your heart and your face. Bring your spine out and down. Your elbows can stay tucked in or widen. Here we're trying to reach our, our chin to the floor. Causing no harm. Apply just the right amount of heat. One more breath. And then inhale, coming up. Use your hands to support the closing of your legs. And lying back. Straight legs lay out or just lie down. Move your hair from the center of your head if you need to when you come to your back and come to the foundation of bridge pose. Taking several cycles of breath to refine and settle. Arms and hands grounded beside you, a little way angled away. Head centered. Feel where your body touches the ground. Exhale one more time. Gently sinking the navel towards the spine with that exhale. Coming up to bridge pose. Press your feet and lift up. This one keeping the arms on the ground and Using them to support this lift. Make some refinements. Maybe you move your head so you have room for your spine to be long. Feel a gentle brightness of the front body opening. If we were too calm, we wouldn't get anything done. So we need a balance of energy and calm. Here's a gentle, gentle energy pose. And slowly breathe out, come down. We'll do two more sets with different arm positions. So the next one, arms go up to the ceiling. Bring your feet in nice and close to your hips and a little wide from each other. Because you might not have been in your optimal position with your legs. So you can feel strong in, as you lift up. Check with your spine, your neck first. And then reach your hands towards the ceiling, palms face each other. You can press that middle upper back into the floor, place between your shoulder blades a bit. Active pressing in your feet, one more time, lift up a little higher. As you breathe out, arms and hips come down. Release. Last one. Lift up your hips. Inhale slowly and mindfully. Set the base first, the foundational part, and then one shoulder at a time underneath the body. Leave your fingers and reach your hands towards your feet. Don't overdo in your shoulders. So maybe a tiny bit of forward roll in the shoulders so it's not all back. Apply the right amount of heat for this moment. Dig a little deeply, lift up, open, and start a slow letting go and coming down. Pause once your pelvis is down. And then work your knees in one at a time to your chest. Free expression here, what feels good? What would you like to do? Stillness or movement. Feel the sensations of your body. Loving awareness. Practicing that 
compassion on ourselves here in our practice. And let's come into center and stillness if you've been moving around and keep your right leg, bring your left foot down and stretch it out. Really bring your right leg in close to your body with your arms and add a few ankle pumps. Move your foot back and forth, up and down. Slowly, mindfully. And relax your foot. Changing sides without disturbing your low back. So go through those steps to bring the other knee in firmly. Hug it in and add the movement of the ankle. Eyes might be about halfway closed so that the lights are not too bright in your eyes. Just take care so you can feel settled and be still. Bring both knees in to Ananda Balasana where you bring your knees wider than your torso or out towards the sides of it, not judging our, our size at all, just being with our own proportions and bring the knees down to the ground with your hands towards the ground, so not to the ground is not necessary. Head centered. One more time, breathe out. Mindfully release the legs together or one at a time so that you are not disturbing especially your lower back and release. I'll leave shoulder stand practice today. So you can, I'll, I'll show some um, options as we come in. And just be aware of staying centered on the back of your head and pay attention. I'm gonna get my head and shoulders on the mat centered. Lifting your feet off the ground and your legs up into the air. So feet together, big toes touch. You can stay here. You can lift it up by putting your hands underneath your pelvis a little bit. Come on into your own expression. It's okay to do a halfway shoulder stand with your hips up. And if you want to keep reaching and straightening, you may do so. Not neck stand, but shoulder stand. Neck is off the floor. Reach, reach through the legs. The hands on the back body help lengthen the spine. One more time, breathe deeply. Transition to cloud pose where you bring your feet overhead in some way. Slowly bring your hands back to the ground, lower into that upside down forward fold shape of halasana, the plow. Arms stay grounded, or you can carefully interlace and bring the shoulders underneath. Breathe deeply once again. Bring your hands to the ground to control the lowering of your spine first, and then your legs. Coming to the right side into a wide twist. There are lots of ways of expressing this. Start with your feet on the floor and just roll your pelvis to the right, letting both knees come over. If you want to come into a different one, that's okay with me. Got to start somewhere. And here, we turn head the other direction, reach out the arm on the opposite side. Settle your other arm somewhere where it feels supportive 
or calming. Breathe deeply and slowly. Exhale is five. Transition to the other side. Disturb yourself as little as possible as you shift your pelvis and your knees the other way. Roll your head, stretch out your arms. And relax, breathe and settle. Exhale is five. Head to center first. Time for a little rest. You might need to do a little arranging to find easy centered position on your back. Or you could rest on your belly. We didn't even go to our bellies today. That's why there's another time to practice because there's a lot. Best. Let go of the effort of doing things. Allow stillness to be your meditation. Letting everything that's made of food relax and soften. That's everything physical about your body. This outer layer. A sense of a lightness in the front body that rests into the back of the body. And rest into the earth. The brain is made of food. It is a physical thing. Let it join the body and rest. Let it rest back into the fluid inside the skull. And once that outer layer has found some softness, you may perceive more clearly the energetic layer of the body. Of the prana maya kosha, there's that word prana, the vital energy. Perhaps a sense of electricity and vibration. Gently sense your energy body. Slowly to release your throat. And stay connected to the sense of the energy body as you make your way to sitting. Try to stay connected to that sensation of 
energy, vibration as you move the physical body around. The mind will return to a single place. Lots of gratitude here, if not already happening, that increasing our inner light by being grateful. Feel the, the energy of your hands. And seal it up and bring it into your heart. Include yourself in your gratitude in the tradition of yoga. Teaching us this self generated state of well being. Um. Thank you so much for joining me for this practice. Thank you. Receive some positive things from that. Time spent can be true.